Yes, Aluna Kabil and Fal. As I told you, this surah was revealed immediately after the Battle of Badr. And a very important issue arose about the spoils and the booty of that bat battle. Because you know the Quraysh were defeated badly. Seventy of them, they lay killed. And there were so many of them, about seventy, they were taken as captives. And such a very great amount of you know, booty and spoils, they were captured by the Muslims. Now what about these spoils? How can we, they be divided? What is the rule about it? Because this, is, this was the first incident. So there was a question. Because in the Arabian custom, they used to say, whosoever has, you know, grabbed something, it belongs to him. Now, but what, were the, what, what, what would be the rule in Islam? Yes, Aluna Kanil Anfal. They are asking you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the spoils. What is nafal? Additional thing. We know, we pray first, obligatory. Nafal, which is additional. So what is Anfal? Because in a battle, victory is the first thing, the real thing. And if you get something, if some booty, some soil, that is additional. So that is why this term has been used. Ya saluna karid al-fal, ulil al-fal ulillahi wa rasul. Tell them, all this booty and spoils, they all belong to Allah and His Messenger. First of all, you all wash your hands off. None of you has any right. Very categorical denial. So just leave it alone. Fattakullah, you must have fear of Allah and regard of Allah. Whatever Allah decides, you must accept it. And you must keep straight the relations between you. Don't start quarreling about these, you know, these worldly things, and the articles, you know, that you have got, and these spoils and booty. And you keep obeying Allah and His Messenger. In kuntum mu'minin, if you are really mu'min. Now, the following two ayat are very important. Who is the real mu'min? In namal mu'minun al-lazina izazo kira Allahu wajilat kuluba kuluba. The real and true mu'min are those that when Allah subhanahu wa taala is mentioned or remembered, their hearts tremble in fear. Wajatuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadatun imana. And when the revelations from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited unto them, it adds to their conviction, adds to their iman, adds to the depth of their real conviction, real iman. And they put all their trust and faith in their Lord. Not in the arms or in the number or you know worldly things. But they think that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He can do everything without anything. And if even you have everything, no result will come out unless he decides. Alladina yuqibuna salah. Another aspect. That was the inner side. The esoteric element of iman. That there is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered, their hearts tremble. And when they listen to the ayat of Quran and the revelations of their Lord, it adds to the depth of their iman and depth of their conviction. And what is the outer manifestation? They establish prayer. And whatever we have provided them, they spend out of it. Spend out of it for the cause of deen, for the pleasure of Allah. They are the true moments. Now this haqiqi moment, a moment who is really a moment, this is a very important place of the Quran which is giving us the prerequisites. What are the prerequisites which you fulfill? Then you can be acknowledged as a true moment. But this is only half of it. We shall note that in the end another aspect of this true iman is given. وَالَّذِينَ amanu. And that is the second aspect. And you know these three aspects will go to make the complete picture of a moment. The inner esoteric element and then outer exoteric. There are two. Salah and Psalm and you know spending in the way of Allah and other jihad.
and Qital fi sabilillah. So these are the three dimensions. As we have the three dimensions of the space, the length and breadth and the height and the depth, three dimensional space. So that is the personality of Mu'min, three dimensions of the personality of a Mu'min. كَمَا أَخْرَجَكَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لَكَارِهُونَ كَمَا In the difference of opinion regarding spoils of war, in the same way there was a difference of opinion when, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your Lord, your Rabb, made you come out from your home بِالْحَقِّ with a definite purpose. When you set out from Medina towards Badr, there was a definite purpose before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was that purpose? It will be described later on. Bilhaqqi. Wa inna fariqa minal mu'minin al A group of the believers didn't like it. They were disliking it. They didn't want to go to fight the army and to confront, you know, a big army. As the things will come, you know, in the later ayah. They kept arguing with you. Even after Even after the matter was absolutely made clear. As if they were being driven to death and they were seeing it. There might have been a few people, you know, among them who were not ready to go to the war. There was a difference of opinion. The Prophet ﷺ, he gathered the Muslims and he told them, O oh Muslims, an army, a big army, is coming from Makkah, from the south. And there is a caravan coming from the north, Syria. The caravan has very little number of soldiers with it as guards. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me that one of these will be yours. You will definitely get victory over one of these. Now tell me, we should go to the caravan or to the army? That was a very important question. Why? Every commander has to see as to what is the morale of the people, of his soldiers, of his men. So before setting out, you know, to confront the army of Quraysh, the Prophet also wanted to know what's the condition of the Muslims. So there were a few just like us, you know. They said, okay, let us go to the caravan. It will be an easy prey. Only a few men guarding it. Then we shall get lot of booty. And even, you know, we don't have arms. At least the arms of those 30 or 50 people, we shall capture and then we shall be in a better position to confront the army. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had some other purpose. The purpose. He wanted to make it clear that Allah is with the Muslims. Although they are few in number. They are 313 only. And most of them are without arms. Only two horses. 70 camels, and they have to confront, you know, an army of 1,000 people, 300 horses, 700 camels. And all were, you know, they were armed to the teeth. So Allah wanted to make it a clear sign, a miracle, to make it clear to the whole people of the Arabian Peninsula that Allah is with them because they got their victory in these conditions. So Allah has that purpose. And that could only be served if these Mormon, you know, if these believers, they confronted the army in this condition. So, but such people, you know, who were not, who were not very eager to go towards the army. They wanted to go towards the caravan. So they were as if they were going because the decision had been made now collectively. So they had to go. But they were going as if they were being driven to death. And they were seeing the death with their eyes. Maybe a few munafiqeen might have been there. And just recall, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was promising with you that one of the two parties will be yours. 
वन आर्मी कमिंग फ्रॉम दिस साउथ दी अदर कैरेवान वह तवद्दू ना अन्ना गैर जाती शौकत तकून नकुम एंड यू वर यू वॉन्टेड विशिंग दैट अदर देन दी आर्म वन शुड बी योर्स कंफ्रंटेशन विद बी शुड बी विद दी कैरेवान यू शुड गो एंड यू नो हैव इट वह यूरीद उल्लाह यू हिक कल हक का भी कल मारते ही दिस इज दर्पज एंड अल्लाह डिसाइडेड टू प्रूव दैट दी ट्रोथ इज दी ट्रोथ वह यकता दादर अल काफरीन एंड अल्लाह वॉन्टेड टू कट दी रूट ऑफ दीज को फार दीज अनबिलीवर्स यू नो दंबर सेवेंटी ऑफ देम किल्ड इंक्लूडिंग अबू जहल द मोस्ट हॉटी मोस्ट प्राउड मोस्ट एरोगेंट पर्सन ऑफ मक्का and so many others of his type they were all killed in the battle of badr le yuhiq al haqq wa yuqtil al batil again the same thing more explained so that allah subhanahu wa taala proves the truth to be the truth and proves the falsehood to be falsehood walau karih al mujrimun although we these people the these criminals might not like it is tastaghisu na rabbakum Just recall when you were calling for the help, praying to Allah for help. First, Ajaba Naku. He responded to you, to your call. You know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One night before the Battle of Badr, he made a very long du'a, very long prayer, a very long sajda, very long prostration. And you know he even said these words: "Oh Allah, if these people, these three hundred thirteen, they are killed tomorrow." then there will be none on the surface of the earth remembering you and taking your name why because i am your last messenger last prophet and this is the result of my 15 years hardest work after 15 years hardest work i have gathered them and they are here now is they are killed and then you because you know when he was prostrating in a small cottage of grass etc which was erected in between the two armies and he was prostrating over there and abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala who was standing as a guard when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam quoted these words he said now that's all don't be don't go beyond this o prophet ya rasulullah o messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then the prophet raised his head with the good tidings of victory that allah subhanahu wa taala has promised me the victory is tastaghisuna rabbakum fastajaba lakum anni mumiddukum bi alfin min al malaikati murtifin when you were praying to allah subhanahu wa taala for help calling upon him for help and he responded that i am going to help you with 1000 angels coming one after the other wa ma ja'alahu allah illa bushra and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as a glad tiding for you wa la tatmainna bihi qulubukum so that your hearts remain at rest wa man nasu illa min indillah and there can be no help except from allah what does it mean even the angels if they were asked to be sent they were to be sent from allah subhanahu wa taala but allah said i don't even need to send the angels i can do anything on my own without anything but i i gave you this figure of 10 of 1000 angels so that you feel satisfied that if we have to confront an army of 1000 people allah subhanahu wa taala is sending for our help 1000 angels that was only for your satisfaction that we decided this way we could do it without sending the angels but we decided in favor of sending angels and telling you that 1000 angels will be there on your back to help you so that your hearts are at rest wa ma ja'alahu allah illa bushra wa la tatmainna bihi qulubukum wa man nasu illa min indillah inna allah azizul hakim verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al aziz all powerful and al hakim and he is also all wise